Okay, so this uh, video lecture will be, uh, we will be discussing about uh, module 13, which is uh, entitled Substantive Procedures to Audit or in Auditing of the Specific Accounts for our um, Financial Statements, which of course will include accounts on, uh, I mean, asset, liability, and equity accounts. Okay, for overview okay so of course this module will discuss about auditing the specific accounts using substantive procedures uh, for the auditor to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to support his opinion about the fairness of the financial statements for the learning outcomes so at the end of this module you will be able to understand the substantive procedures when auditing assets payables, and equity accounts. For the content of this module, so we will be uh, including substantive procedures to audit your asset, payable, and equity accounts. Okay, so to start with, let us uh, discuss about the substantive procedures to audit the asset accounts. So of course, for the first uh, asset account, uh, we will uh, start with cash account okay so we have here the the list of uh typical substantive procedures that is performed by the auditor to audit the cash account and balances so for the first uh procedure here the auditor will be preparing a bank transfer schedule for the last week of the audit year and the first week of the following year so what is a bank transfer schedule so this is a document that shows the dates of all the transfers of cash among the clients various accounts and this is also used to ascertain whether these cash transfer transactions are properly recorded okay, as both a receipt by one bank and a disbursement by another bank in the same accounting period so um this a uh, specific substantive procedure for the cash transactions is focused on the uh, transfer of cash from one bank to another of the different bank accounts of the entity okay so this is of course to make sure that uh these transactions are properly accounted for and recorded in the books of accounts to determine or to ascertain also the accuracy and correctness of uh, the cash balance okay meaning uh one bank who receives the cash transfer uh will be accounted for and for the disbursement okay, also at the same time okay so this is to make sure that uh, there is a uh, correct um, accounting okay, for these transactions. Also, um, the cash uh, transactions of the entity where they deposit all their co cash collections or receipts okay, in the bank and for the disbursements where they use, for example, checks Okay, to pay for their liabilities to their suppliers and other creditors. Okay, so uh, this is also to make sure that um, the the bank statement balance will be equal to the cash account balance in the books of the entity. Okay, although there is a monthly bank reconciliation, but uh, this is done. Are prepared by the employee of the entity so that's why on the part of the auditor to uh, ascertain and to gather sufficient and appropriate audit evidence about cash accounts so he has to do this substantive procedure okay so the primary objective of uh, this uh, schedule of cash transfer okay, is to assist the auditors in detecting kiting so what is kiting um this is a form of fraud that 
uh, the the effect of this is to overstate our cash balance account. Okay, so this is uh, cost usually uh, by simultaneously including two or more bank accounts. So that's why um, this will uh, result into the overstatement of cash balance. So this is what we are talking about uh, earlier where um, each transaction of receipt and disbursement from one bank to another should be accounted for properly to avoid overstatement. Okay. And of course, in, in the case of fraud where the management intends okay, to overstate their cash using this scheme, okay, so the auditor will be able to detect that as well. Okay. So, kiting is possible because a check takes several days to clear the bank on which it is drawn. So, this is what we call the float period. A float period means that, uh, for example, uh, the entity draws or issues a check for paying a liability. Okay, and uh, this check is given to the payee. And then the payee will uh, in cash this okay, from the bank. And um, basically, the effect of this is to uh, decrease the cash uh, balance in the bank account. However, because of this float period, um, it takes for a check uh, several days okay, before this can be reflected this uh, deduction can be reflected from the statement of or the account or the cash account of the entity in the bank. Okay, so probably two to three days before it can be cleared and the transaction will be reflected in the uh, cash balance in the bank. Okay, so because of this float, kiting is possible, meaning that the, for example, uh, today is the last day of the accounting period of the entity and they issued the check uh, yesterday however it would take three days before the check can be cleared so meaning that the that that disbursement will be reflected as a deduction from their bank account uh two days after the end of their accounting period okay so meaning at the end of their accounting period their cash is still uh the same or has the same balance without the deduction of such uh, disbursement. Okay, so it because of this, it will have the effect of overstating our cash balance. Okay, so this is what we call a uh, float period in uh, the clearing of checks. Okay, in the bank. So those are for the first substantive procedure to audit our cash account. So the second uh, substan substantive procedure that can be performed by the auditor to audit the cash account is to send confirmation letters to financial institutions to verify the existence of the amounts on their account okay, as deposited okay, in their accounts. So, uh, financial institutions can include banks um, and other uh, institutions where the entity has uh, the transactions which involves the cash flow, cash in and out okay, of the uh, cash okay, from their bank account. So here, um, most likely, uh, it is in the bank. Okay, This is where usually the entity deposits their cash. So the auditor uh, should first... Um, have the consent of the entity okay, to to uh, uh, send this confirmation okay and um, the bank also will ask their the entity which is who is their client if uh, their um, bank account statement will be will have the consent okay to be disclose to the auditor because normally um, in this type of uh, 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 procedure uh, the bank is not allowed 
to disclose to anyone okay, about the bank details and the bank deposit of a certain client. So that's why in this case, the auditor should first uh, get their consent. Okay, and of course, as we, if you could still remember in our discussion before, uh, confirmation, uh, external confirmation is considered to be more reliable because this is, uh, the response is from the outside entity which is not related to the, the, the entity under audit and the responses will uh, be received directly by the auditor. Okay, so the purpose of this is to confirm if uh, the deposit reflected in the books of accounts of the entity really exists okay, in that particular financial institution. So the auditors use the standard confirmation form. Okay, so normally they have this uh, format to obtain information from financial institutions. So here the auditor can ask about... Uh, two types of balances, the deposits and loans. Okay, so this is just to confirm the existence of uh, these amounts. So the form is designed to substantiate the evidence primarily on the existence. Okay, so as mentioned. And this is not to discover or provide assurance about the accounts not listed on the form. So this is just for the purpose of uh, determining the existence of such accounts. Okay, so evidence on the completeness is not uh, normally uh, inquired under this substantive procedure. Again, the purpose of the auditor is to determine the existence of such accounts. Okay, so another substantive procedure for auditing cash is to aud the auditor to review the year-end bank reconciliations to verify that cash has been properly stated. Okay, so normally, um, the, the bank reconciliation is prepared every month. And for the year end, uh, this is uh, the, the, uh, the amount or the balance that will be equal to the uh, bank balance account. Okay, and also to determine if that is um, in... Uh, in conformance okay, with the bank or with the balance in the books of the entity. So basically at year end, um, this is uh, for the ult uh, ultimate balance for the year. Okay. Okay, that's why uh, only those uh, year end reconciliations are uh, being reviewed by the auditor and not to include uh, the. Um, the reconciliation from other months of the year. Okay? So, bank reconciliations, these either uh, in two or four columns. Okay? If you can still remember in your financial accounting. So, this is what we call proof of cash form. So, these are used by the auditors to reconcile all cash receipts and disbursements that is recorded on the books to those on the bank statement. So in this case, aside from reviewing the bank reconciliations that is prepared by uh, the entity, or the employee of the entity, the auditor can also um, recalculate and prepare his own bank reconciliation at the end of the year to determine the accuracy and the correctness of the cash balance. Okay, so it will of course uh, include deposits and disbursements recorded on the bank statements okay, to those on the books. Okay, so you already know what or how to prepare the bank reconciliation. So this is what the auditor should uh, also do. Okay, Another substantive procedure is um, the auditor should obtain a bank cut-off statement this, the purpose of this is to verify whether the reconci reconciling items on the year-end year bank reconciliations have been properly recorded. Okay, so cut-off is, or bank cut-off is um, to be determined so that the auditor will know 
that only those deposits and uh, disbursement uh, pertaining to the current period will be included in the books or be, will be recorded in the books of the entity and those which do not pertain okay, to the current period will not be included so bank cut of statements uh, this normally shows bank transactions so here the auditor will uh, see the deposits and how many days uh, the checks were cleared this is to determine uh, also if when does uh, this uh, checks were drawn and uh, when does the the bank reflected okay the deduction from the entity's cash account so this is for a short period before and after year end that's why if you could still remember in the first substantive procedure where the auditor will prepare a bank uh, transfer schedule okay so usually this is a uh, seven to ten business days okay this is a uh, uh, a week the week at the year end of the audit and after okay so these are used by the auditor to verify uh, reconciling items that will appear on the year end bank reconciliation statements that is prepared by the client to determine if they indeed uh, prepared and uh, accounted those transactions accordingly and correctly in the um, current period okay so aside from those that we have mentioned uh, there are also other substantive procedures that the auditor can use okay to uh, to audit cash account so here are the other typical substantive audit procedures first uh, the auditor could review disclosures for compliance with the applicable financial reporting framework Okay, so this is to determine if indeed uh, they followed okay, the standard on accounting for cash account. Another is uh, they might or they could inquire of the management concerning compensating balance requirements and restrictions on cash. Because um, there are entities where they normally... Uh, have this rule or practice where uh, they should have a, a, a particular amount of cash that should be uh, um, left at the end of the accounting period probably because of some um, commitments like for the loan or credit from the suppliers and financial institutions okay, which require them to have such a uh, cash balance at the end of the accounting period so they should meet this uh, particular uh, requirement and if also there are some restrictions on the use of cash uh, the purpose of this is to determine if they are also following the 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 standard or if there are any transactions which might lead to fraud okay that the management might be concealing okay because of uh these balances at the year uh, at year end okay another is uh the auditor could also count cash on hand at year end to verify its existence okay of course in counting this uh, cash account uh, there sh the treasurer or the employee who is responsible for account for or has the custody of cash should be present okay during the counting okay another is to review the cut off cash receipts and disbursements around year end okay to verify that the transactions affecting cash are recorded accurately in the proper period so this is the um, purpose of having the cut off Okay, to determine if those transactions pertaining only to uh, the current year are recorded also in the current accounting period. Another is 
the auditor could also review bank statements to verify that book balances represent amounts to which the client has rights. Okay, um, of course, um, aside from this one, the, the auditor could also complement this by confirming, confirming from the bank of the existence of such accounts, okay, as mentioned earlier. Another is uh, perform the analytical procedures to test the reasonableness okay, of cash balances, meaning aside from the bank statements, the auditor could also ask for some contracts or um, uh, forms okay, which uh, normally uh, represents any cash or any rights or obligations of the entity and which are also made are collected and uh, disbursed or paid during the year. Okay. Another is uh, food summary schedules of the cash and uh, agree their total to the amount which will appear on the FS. Okay, so this is uh, the auditor can uh, recalculate okay, the cash in and out of uh, the entity okay, to determine if based on his calculation and uh, determination of uh, the ending cash balance, this, this is the same as what is reflected in the entity's FS. Okay, and the auditor can also reconcile summary schedules of cash against the general ledger. So this is to determine if um, this amounts in the schedule of cash uh, is the same with that uh, in the or is with the same uh, has the same balance in the general ledger okay because normally in the general ledger this is where uh, the the management uh, gets the amount that which uh, that will be reflected in the financial statements and lastly is to test the transactions of any foreign currency if um, the entity is engaged in foreign currency transactions because this has a special accounting and foreign currencies are uh, they are prone to fraud and error because uh, the exchange rate fluctuates from time to time and the auditor will determine if the entity is uh, recording such amount which is uh, the correct exchange rate for the the uh, the period on which the financial statements are prepared okay so those are for the substantive procedures in auditing our cash account balance